Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy. Four nerds, by nerds, hanging out with... This nerd, I'm, I'm Ted. And uh, today we're going to be doing another edition of What Does Your Class Say About You? This time we're going to talk about The Barbarian. Jump down to the description below, sign up for the Nerdarchy newsletter. It's a great way to get gaming tips and learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So, in this series, we like to talk about the different classes and how they shape the personality and uh, the role-playing style that you're probably going to use when you play these, or, you know, at least suggestions anyway. So, the Barbarian, it, there, there's so many different things that jump into your head, and it doesn't necessarily have to... Um, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to necessarily dictate exactly where you come from. So if I, if I take the class barbarian, most people assume, well, that's a background. You grew up savage. You grew up, you know, in nature. You know, you're not a civilized type type of situation. But it can go the other the the other way. What happens if you grew up like? Play a, play a noble barbarian. You grew up in a city. You 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 know you went through all of this, but something in you snapped one day and you 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 learned how to harness you know some kind of you know internal power and when you enter combat you just don't care about anything else so that, that's almost like a reskin of the bu 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 barbarian features right mm -hmm. so <clears throat> The only thing where that gets a little bit wonky is when you get into like their ritual casting. Mm -hmm. You know, so they, you know, like, I mean, you can totally just ignore them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think anybody really likes to like uh, sack out any other stuff, or maybe you know, you trade it out for something else. But what I was getting at is, is when you're a barbarian, when you enter combat, you're not, you're not thinking. You're, you're block. You know, your thoughts are blocked behind, you know, this wall of of rage and frustration, and you're you're taking it out on whatever's in front of you. Well, yeah, no, I know. See, I know what you're saying. I mean, you could, or you could even go another route with like the dervish, mm -hmm. uh, where where you play a character that is actually so skilled that their blades are never stopping, and you know, the reason why they take half damage from the most attacks is they're actually deflecting yeah, them. They're parrying. You know, and you could totally reskin things, but and I, and that, that that changes it. You know, it, again, barbarian. It's the see. It's weird because barbarian is. As a class, it's also it's also a cultural thing. Yes. But like, here's the thing too: like, not all not all tribesmen, savages, Vikings, whatever. Not all of them are actually barbarians. Not all mm -hmm. of them berserk. Right. Like, you know, it, it, there is a lot of li literature and stories where they use uh, Viking and Viking esque um, societies that have berserkers but the berserkers are almost like outcasts within their own society like they're the crazy ones mm -hmm. they're you know depending on the, the, the this the style like they're taking drugs before they go to war and doing all this crazy stuff to psych themselves out and so you know normal people of their society <laughs> don't even really want to associate with them it is you know of one variation right you know, if you're looking at more modern characters, uh, you, if you look at Wolverine, who go, goes savage and berserk, it would be like a barbarian. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, no one's going to even know what I'm talking about, but uh, Sa Sasquatch from Alpha Flight uh, I know. I know. was a character that was would, would occasionally freak out and go into bestial rage. Um, so there's different reasons why you can have that rage ability. But now if we just pull it back a little bit and look at like the other parts of the barbarian and culture and society as to what that's going to say. Like we've seen a lot of different iterations of this character throughout all the literature and, and different stories we've read. Mm -hmm. You know, you had Riverwind from Dragonlance, yep. who, uh, although he was a barbarian, he, he never really struck me as someone that has bar have, having like barbarian levels. Right. He was a fierce warrior, mm -hmm. but you know he didn't fight like a barbarian. He fought like a fighter. He fought like a fighter. You know, mm -hmm. and he was he was reserved, quiet, and, um, and stoic. But you know he you know he would have been like a fighter with the with the background 
of Atlander, right? For you know, pretty yeah. much. Mm-hmm. You then, but then you have characters. Then you have uh, characters like Conan, who let's face it, like the barbarian class is Conan is <laughs> is based off of Conan, right? You know, the, you know, the idea is you know he grew up in an uncivilized was uncivilized people taken slave all of his life. He finally, you know, uh, breaks free of his of his bondage, and then he takes that you know savagery and and berserkness with him. And if you think about the Conan, the character of Conan, like, um, uh, even though I've read the books, uh-huh. I've read different books, I still can't help but think of, you know, the movies with uh-huh. Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. like yeah. his iconic Conan, oh, you know, with him pushing the wheel for ten years, <laughs> uh, you, you know. So like, like if you look at that example of a barbarian. Like, it's not just for him. It wasn't just a matter of being born of a certain society. He was he was made. He was forged, because you know he spent all that time in in slavery and isolation. Uh, you know, which is definitely going to do some harmful psychological things to a person. Mm-hmm. You know, even the people that he was around, he just kind of watched them die because they couldn't push the wheel as good as him. <laughs> that wheel was a mother. You know, and then you know from there he's taken out of that environment. And placed into fighting pets, right? You know where he excels because he's stronger than everyone else. And he pushed that freaking wheel for ten years. <laughs> he pushed that wheel for ten years. And you know, not only that, you know, he's a little crazy. He's got the ability to snap in combat and just destroy whatever's in front of him. Mm-hmm. You know, and so and then you know from there he moves beyond the fighting pits into being a free man. He then has to. You know, then, then he has to reconcile that past with his future mm-hmm. and what kind of person he's going to become right. and be. You know, but that you know those fires of rage still burn within him. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know, Conan was actually you know, the, you know he he was a, a a savage. He was a gladiator. A gladiator. He was a slave. He was a thief. <laughs> you know, so so you know he used all those skill sets to do different things. And don't and, forget, he was the barbarian and the destroyer. Well, there was that too, and eventually the king, but but you know, so he had this long journey that that essentially you know shaped him. Like you could go, like it would be so hard to pick a background for that character. Yeah, I like like if we were D and D eyes and Conan, like because he definitely has the gladiator entertainer variant. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know which you know one you would use for slave. Uh, you know. It, whether you'd like look at Urchin or, or one of the other ones, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I don't think there is a good background for there for isn't. Just saying you were. I, a slave. I think they, I think they moved away from that that concept because of how tetchy it is right now. Political, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll make that background, but, but the, you know, but the point is, like, that's just one example of a story arc of a barbarian and all these different factors that if affected him right so and also like the other examples of barbarians that aren't necessarily barbarians because of society but because of something else mm-hmm. so when you're creating your persona for that character you have to look at it you know like you know is he a noble warrior from from the basically from the wilderness or another good example of a character that i could definitely see being uh at the the totem Variation of the barbarian is Tarzan. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, and is there? He's, he's not civilized in any way, shape, or form. You know, I mean, that makes. But sense. But he's not actually a barbarian, right? He's not society-wise. He was actually a nobleman. Oh, absolutely. Who was lost in the jungle and raised by apes. Well, this this is where he starts off with you know the the outlander background and through role playing he earns the noble background is that how it works that, that's how that you know comes to light that he really was this person so he gets these these other benefits for some reason i don't think so i think they still looked at him as a freak <laughs> <laughs> and he went back to the jungle there's a reason he just didn't do well but no it, it, you know that's a it's another example of how how you would play that character you know for one he you know limited verbal Yep, you know, uh, felt more comfortable with animals than he did with people. People, uh, you know, he, he had the ability to go ape ship when he when he needed to. <laughs> yeah. You know, it ain't easy fighting crocodiles with like a pocket knife. <laughs> <laughs> you need something going on there. And I, and and Tarzan is to me like the most extreme um, example of a barbarian. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know, when, when, when you are really just like a hair's breadth from actually being an animal, mm-hmm. you, know, you don't get much more barbaric than that. Uh, I would agree. You know, 
but on the other side of that, like you could build a character that lives amongst his tribe and is a nobleman within his tribe, you know, that, but he's part of the, um, within that culture, he's part of like a inner society of berserkers where, you know, you, you know, it's a sect of warriors in their culture mm -hmm. that, you know, have this ability to kind of freak out and, or, you know, a, you know, a, abandon all fear or you know whatever the tenets are you know right. it, it, to an extent it could almost be like their paladin right it, you know their sacred warriors that not everyone has the ability to do mm -hmm. uh, so um, so so I mean like you know a couple of options of how you can you know change up your barbarian um you know you've like you said you've, you've got the ability to just be like all right there's something in you that you you just unlock this rage you could totally use the D&D's uh, I interact with an object and, you know, take some kind of, uh, you know, potion or sniff or, you know, whatever. whatever right. Much um, peyote. You know, that, that's going to allow you to, to do this, this rage thing. Um, you know, or as we said, you know, early in the beginning of the video, oh, forget the whole barbaric side well, of it. And just well, do, raging do takes it. a bonus action, so... I, 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 as the DM, what I would do is, like, if you have something that makes you go... Like, that's the bonus action, whatever it is mm -hmm. that you have to do. Yeah, so... But then the other thing is, you know, you could you could uh, proclaim it as, as the dervish, and your actual fighting skill is the quote-unquote rage, and, you know, you're just reskinning that, that, that concept, and as you... As you learn to improve. <laughs> but when you do that, you're not really a barbarian at all, you know, in how the character would you, yeah, be played. Visually, you're not a barbarian. You know, mechanically, you are. And it just, you know, so there's different ways to, to well, change Well, my point up. is, uh, from looking at it from a cultural aspect or okay. from a society, you would not, you wouldn't ha have to be fr any, from a society where that, you know, yeah. you would expect a barbarian to be from. Right. The, the, also, the other example that most of you are going, a lot of you are going to be familiar with, would be Wolfgar. I mean, mm -hmm. he's he's the case of the barbarian that gets taken in at the you know at a well, actually not even that young. I mean, he's like he was a young teenager. Yeah, uh, mid mid young nine young. to thirteen somewhere. And I mean, he was he was on the battlefield. So I mean, it's like, yeah. Well, I don't think he's in his tweens. So I definitely think he's older than that. But a teenager was okay. But an example of someone who's lived as a barbarian, you know, or in a, a primitive society. You know, up until their teens, and then you know gets basically taken as an indentured servant into a dwarven hold. Right. Uh, and, and but yeah, at his core, he's still barbarian. He just he just kind of gets domesticated and civilized. Uh, yeah. You know. So, but it's definitely but it's an interesting take on the barbarian. Right. And it you know it form it forms a different kind of person. You know, you go from living in a primitive society to a more civilized society. But not only that, it's a civilized society that isn't of your own people. They're not right. human. They're dwarves. Right. Yeah. Right. You, know, you go from living underneath the, on the tundra on the under the open sky to living underground in a right. hole, basically. And you know, and then your weapons master, who you get stuck with, happens to be a dark elf. <laughs> like so. You know, and you know, and the weird, the, the even further weird is that your kind of like adoptive sister is human as well, right? But completely different than than you, you know. Right. So it, it's like all these little facts because she's kind of build. she's physically a human, but personality she's, she's more like a dwarf, right. yeah. Yeah, so there's a ton of different ways that you can use the your class, the barbarian, to inform how you play your character. Yeah, the first thing to to understand is what kind of society does that character come from, and you can build out from there. Either making it a very norm for that sort of society with your character, or going the opposite direction. But either way, it's still going to inform your char your character choices right. when it comes to role playing and building the personality of that character. Absolutely. So, what do you guys think? You know, what what uh. What what makes a barbarian a barbarian? Put your thoughts down below while you're at it. Like, share, even subscribe. You can check us out over at nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.